Hello, I'm Howard Butler, and today we're going to be talking about the path that an I.O. request takes from the application all the way down to the storage. So let's take an example of a typical user. We'll say that's me. And I'm going to try to write and store two megabytes of data. Let's say it's a Microsoft Word document. Now, Windows doesn't necessarily know what type of physical storage I have nor does it really need to know. All it's going to take into consideration is that Windows believes that there is some type of virtual or logical um, description of the type of storage. It has a starting address and an end of disk location. Okay? And all the logical clusters are mapped into individual pieces. These are called clusters. And that's identified in a file system structure called the dollar bitmap. Now, as I pointed out, the dollar bitmap file contains information about which clusters are allocated, which clusters are marked as free. So if I'm going to store and save information out of a two megabyte uh, Word document, the same would be true whether it's SQL or whether it's Exchange or PowerPoint or any type of file that you're storing. Windows is going to look for the next available free space. So if the next available free space is only 128 KB in size, well, there's certainly not enough room to stick two megabytes of data into a section of space that's mapped to be 128 KB in size. So as a result, you'll have one part of the file in one location. Then you might have the next piece of the file, let's say it's 256 KB in size, being referenced in this location. And maybe the next chunk of space is only 64 KB in size, and that's right there. So you can see that as the number of extents to a file build up, each of these extents maps to a different range of logical clusters. As a result, each of these I.O. requests has to be communicated down to the next level. Okay, so we have one I.O., we'll have another I.O. request, a third and a fourth in this example, each of these I.O. requests takes a measurable amount of time. In fact, this is measured within the Microsoft Windows performance monitoring utility called a split I.O. It's where your application says, do this one thing, but then Windows has to translate it into multiple additional requests. So each of those takes a measurable amount of time takes longer to be passed on, and makes each layer underneath this, whether it's the RAID or SAN driver, become less and less efficient. Okay? Because it's less efficient and taking more I.O. requests, and each I.O. request takes a certain amount of time to complete, you can obviously see that storing a two megabyte file into four locations takes four times longer than it would if the file was just in one piece. So, Let's take the same example, only in this time, where the data is being written to a storage device, a two megabyte file that's just in one fragment, just one piece. Well, it's got to communicate to the dollar bitmap file. Okay, and the dollar bitmap file, again, sees a start and an end location of all the clusters that are represented down at the physical storage level. And in this particular case, if it finds a chunk of free space that's big enough to contain the entire file, then only one I.O. request is necessary to filter on down. So again, it becomes a question as to how many I.O.s do you really want to do? The fewer number of I.O. requests that are, that are necessary, the more efficient, the faster your applications behave. In fact, Disk Keeper and Velocity from Conducive Technologies has a specific type of technology called IntelliWrite that allows us to locate these large chunks of free space and use those instead of allowing Windows to split the file into multiple pieces. So if we can make a file be written in a larger contiguous area, then the file no longer becomes fragmented, issues the fewest number of I.O. requests which makes then the underlying storage more and more efficient. Therefore, the data that comes back to the user is faster, and you can do more work in the same amount of time. So thank you very much. We'll see you next time.